What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to Call Game, Kenny Freer, whatever you want to call it. I don't even know if this is a good day to upload an episode because I know a lot of stuff is going on in sports outside of basketball, but I only know basketball, and I watched a bunch of it today, so I wanted to talk about it. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you are new, get in on the ground floor because, well, the next month or so, this Call Game thing is like, Y'all didn't even know what we got on the agenda. We've been working very hard behind the scenes. You don't want to miss out. So subscribe, leave a like. Let's talk about today's slate of games. And I'm starting off with the Pelicans because, man, am I disappointed. So first of all, give a lot of love to Minnesota Timberwolves for winning this game. If you did not know, the Pelicans lost to the Timberwolves, which ain't bad until you consider that Carthy Towns missed this game with the virus still. And then D'Angelo Russell was sitting because of rest. This was a game that the Pelicans should not have only won, but it should have won convincingly. But instead, they lost by 10 in a game where they didn't look good at all. There was not many bright things you could take away from this game. And I want to talk about that. But before, let me give a lot of love to Minnesota Timberwolves because this is easily a game where they go out and they don't play hard because they're missing their top two guys. And not even just their top two guys. They're like their top two guys by far. Like there's a drop off between one and two and then two to three. That is heavy. But they came out. They fought a Nasri. Coming in, playing very, very well. I love watching Nas play because he always hooping in those Kobe Grinches behind me, and it's one of my favorite basketball sneaker of all time. Him shooting perfect from free throw line is great from the center. Um, I've always liked Nas Reed, even in college, the little bit that I did know about him in college. Another real bright spot for them is the fact that Jared Cover got minutes, and today he was really, really good. And then lastly, to see Jared Vanderbilt play this well is very promising for them. I hope this opened the eyes of Coach Saunders to finally start him when Carthony Towns comes back because he's just the best power forward on their roster to fit alongside Carthy Towns because he plays with his intensity, he plays his defense, he rebounds very well, so he should be getting those starting spots over uh, Hern Gomez, and they are still missing Hern Gomez too, so they got a good team win today, but the Pelicans, as much as it was a good team win for the Timberwolves, this is a really, really bad loss for the Pelicans. Now, I want to talk about this because if you remember some of my preseason stuff when I was talking about teams, the Pelicans are one of the most confusing teams for me to predict because obviously... They have good quality NBA players. Brandon Ingrams is coming off an all-star year. Zion Williamson in the small sample size we saw of him last year was really, really good. Um, Steven Adams has been a winning player for the majority of his career, and he plays amazing defense as like an anchor. Uh, Eric Bledsoe has shown he could be a very good starting point guard on good regular season teams. You see, I had to throw that regular season in. And then Lonzo Ball, positive defender, great playmaker and open floor. They had players, and J.J. Reddick coming off the bench. They have players on this roster. You're like, okay, I can see – I can see them being okay, but then you think about those players not just as individuals but as a team, and that's what makes them weird because obviously the spacing is really bad and the pieces just don't fit together. There's been really a decent amount of times this season where they start off like – think about the game that was on National TV the other day against Utah Jazz where they come out guns blazing and, and they hit an extreme amount of threes in that first quarter, but they played at this pace that you want to see the Pelicans play at. When you have Lonzo Ball, Say what you want about Lonzo Ball. He has not been good this year. Objectively, he has not been good this year. And we can talk about that in a second about his role and his fit alongside the rest of this team. Where he fits best is in the open floor. He is a, I would say he's maybe a slightly above average playmaker in the half court. But in the open floor, this guy's at the top of his game. And when you have a guy like Zion Williamson, you have a guy like Brandon Ingram, you want this team to be running and gunning. I don't know where they sit at pace in the league, but it doesn't feel like this team has playing to that strength of run and gun except for like that first quarter against the Utah Jazz. And arguably the first quarter of this, uh, this game as well, they were running and gunning and something happens. We're like, we're going to play the half-court game now. And the half-court game is so much worse because Brandon Ingram is a guy that needs his isolation touches, but it's hard for him to isolate when teams are doubling off of Eric Bledsoe. They're diving in because they don't they don't trust um, Lonzo Ball at the three anymore. It just doesn't work. And I think a, a Stan Van Gunny has to start playing towards the strength of his team and not just playing what he knows because he is not playing to the strength of this team. Zion and Brandon Ingram can work together. But the way that Stan Van Gundy is playing them together, they can't. He has to change things up. And there's no reason for us to be 15, 16 games to the season and Eric Bledsoe and Lonzo still be starting together. The experiment has failed. Can it? It's over. Bring one of those other players into the starting lineup. I know J.J. has been really bad this year. And that's a little bit scary for J.J. to be the most lethal knockdown shooter, one of the top five lethal knockdown shooters over the last decade, and now he can't hit a shot. But they need some type of spacing. Nikhil Alexander-Walker, having him in the starting lineup for a little bit, was positive. He adds a different element that Lonzo Ball playing as a shooting guard just does not work. The reason he has not been good is for himself too, but like the role that they have changed him to be from the where he's been over his tight career is crazy. 
as decent of a spot-up shooter Lonzo Ball was last year because he had turned himself into a positive spot-up shooter, for him to be just that right now is kind of crazy to me. And even in this game, they had this little run towards the end of it, and a lot of that was when Lonzo Ball had the ball in his hands. It just doesn't really work. Stan Vagani has to change some things, and these, these players have to learn. I, I, other than Zion and Brandon Ingram, everybody should they should be taking calls about everybody. Lonzo Ball's market as a player is going to be super, super interesting because I know there are going to be some teams out there that convince themselves that they still see all of the potential in Lonzo and he's been dealt a bad hand here with the Pelicans. But I can also see a lot of GMs like, nope, we'll stay far away from that. There's going to be a GM out there that offer him big time money. I just know it. I just know it. I just know it. And then the Pelicans probably at their best if they just let him go. They just let him go or trade him before then. Trade him before then. I would say probably right now his trade value is at an all-time low because, again, he's not hitting the shots to the extent that they want him to until, like, the last couple minutes of this game. But this team is just very, very weird. And and even, like I said, they were a, a hard team for me to predict. Me predicting them to be look, looking like one of the worst teams in the league was definitely not on my radar. So Stan Van Gundy has to get it together as a, as a coach. He just does because the, the system they are running does not fit their personnel. So that's my Pelicans talk. Let's talk about the other games of the day that I watched. The 76ers get another win. Detroit has another, and I mean another game, with a fight super hard just to lose. But this one is different. And the reason this is different because it wasn't Blake Griffin playing 40 minutes. It wasn't Derrick Rose playing 30 minutes. They actually allowed their young guys to go out there and play. Um, Sadiq Bey started because of the injuries, and Sadiq Bey played 20 minutes. Um, I, Isaiah Stewart played 20 minutes, and a lot of that is because Mason Plumlee did foul out. Josh Jackson, Sfima Kailuk, Sekou Dembuya, these are all guys that play 16, 17, 18 minutes. And they even Saban Lee got like 18, um, 12 minutes. So it's really good to see the younger guys getting a little bit of love today because of Derrick Rose being out, because of Blake Griffin being out. And look at that, you were still competitive. Even though Jeremy Grant got the clamps put on him by one of the most confusing players in the NBA this season, Ben Simmons, two back-to-back really, really, really good games for Ben Simmons. Back-to-back. Could this mean he's back on that all-star trajectory? Maybe, because the first couple games of the season, he he wasn't looking like that. He put the absolute clamps on Jeremy Grant today. I don't – somebody's going to have the advanced life stats later tomorrow where Jeremy Grant shot 0 for 12 when uh, Ben Simmons was guarding him. That's what it felt like today. Shout out to Jeremy Grant for this amazing streak of the season. It stopped. His 20-point per game streak stopped today because Ben Simmons did that thing to him. And MVP Joel Embiid, and I'm saying MVP up to this point, showed out for one once again. He has been the most dominant player in the league so far this year. The most dominant player in the league so far this year. I still want to see them play a very healthy team and a very good team. It has not happened so far. At least I don't think off the top of my head. But, man, that, that, that man Joel and Ben Simmons today, really, really good. Next game. The Brooklyn Nets get out with the victory. The first victory, the victory plan. They got the great against the Miami Heat. Bam out of bio. The way this man has progressed every single year of his career is ridiculous. Why the hell did he look like he was taking Kevin Durant pull-ups this today? That's just in his bag now, apparently. I went to look even at the advanced stats of like his accuracy and his um his frequency of taking these mid-range jump shots from year one to year two to year two to year three and year three to year. man. The way he has jumped every single year is very scary for the league. I'm just saying. That man putting up 40 and and 10, basically, and assists on a depleted Heat team against one of the better teams, I guess, is scary. Now, the defense of the Brooklyn Nets, terrible. Uh, but, But, bam, crazy game. Very, very crazy game. Even expanded to shoot a three today. So, shout out to him. I, I, no, Siri, just be quiet, please. But you did have – okay, and then you did have um, Kyrie Irving. I don't know what she'd be up to. Kyrie Irving having a spectacular fourth quarter, first half Joe Harris hitting a bunch of shots, and then Kevin Durant hitting the last dagger of the game. James Harden, again, I said this after the very first game they played together, when James Harden is on the court with the second unit, I need him to be James Harden from – Houston, and he will eventually do that. I am pretty confident in that. He's still trying to find his way, but there's no reason for him to be passing up to Reggie Perry when he can be doing that step-back stuff he did for the last four seasons. You know what I'm saying? So, yes, um, 
a quality win, I guess. Utah Jazz get another one. Shout out to Steph Curry for passing Reggie Miller. Um, Utah Jazz continue their hot streak. Keep it up, man. The the volume at which this team is shooting threes is so much different than what they've been doing over the past um, couple years. And that's a testament to Quinn Snyder being able to read and adapt. I mean, the personnel is the same. But, I mean, they always had a good three-point shooting cast. But this year, they're just like, let's just go off balls to the wall. Balls to the wall. And today, they shot a bunch of threes. And guess what? They won another game. Um, The Bulls lost a game to the Lakers where Anthony Davis got his mojo back. I had a very good feeling about Anthony Davis dominating my Bulls because we don't have interior defense, especially since Wendell Carter's out. So congratulations to Anthony Davis. Could this be the turn in the right direction for him offensively? Possibly. And again, if you want to hear me talk extensively about the Lakers, I recommend going to the last video after the Bucks game because I spent a lot of time on them. Um, but Anthony Davis getting that swagger back is really, really good. The Bulls got to learn how to defend the interior or the exterior. They just got to defend. Um, Boogie had a very good game, his first 20-plus blank game of the season. But I admit, I did not watch much of this one. But I will go back and watch because I am a big fan of Boogie. So to see him put up 28-17, and 17, I got to see how he did it. My apologies, Rockets fans. You will get that love once I eventually get to it. And then the last game of the day, the double OT game. I, could, I, I need this to be a series. I need seven straight games of this. The last two nights have been incredible between these two teams. Even with the injuries of Devin Booker in game number two, super exciting games to watch. Jokic is a different beast, different monster. And these are two back-to-back -back very quality wins for them as a team um as cool to see uh chris paul have point god type moments in both of these games you know the first game having a bunch of assists and in this game he had a bunch of clutch shots obviously they end up losing because jamal murray is built different that that shot he had hit to send it to the first overtime god tier difficult shot i'm telling y'all they are players in the league that do nothing but hit take and hit heavily contested super tough shots and jamal murray's like top five at that in the league him Jason Tatum Pascal Siakam Kevin I mean Michael Porter Jr. is on that list too please in the comment section talk to me about some more super hard shot takers and makers in the league because those are some of my favorites if you enjoyed the video leave it a like I'll be back soon peace out call game